Hey boys and girls, Eugene Hughes Motorized. Fine folks at Hynate asked me to do a video review of their 110, 220 volt plasma cutter there. Got a link down below if you're interested in getting one. I give it a thumbs up, but let's take a look at it. All right, so you've got the box here that I'm pulling out that's got the little bobs and bits, the torch and all that. We'll get into detail on that in just a minute. And here's the main unit. Appears very well constructed. Nothing uh, in this kit here that I saw looked uh, cheap or substandard. Uh, this little bag of uh, goodies, we're going to go into more detail on that. Here is the bracket that holds the filter dryer regulator on and here's the filter dryer regulator this is the adapter that you can plug the 220 volt cable into 110 so you can run it on 110 here is the hose that goes from the filter dryer into the back of the unit this is the working clamp or the ground clamp here is an air hose and this is the manual save it may come in handy there right uh, this is the pressure gauge that you're going to screw into the filter dryer regulator and here is the bag of goodies I, I told you I'd talk about uh, you've got some Teflon tape you've got two extra bits of the consumables the tip and the electrode now this little blue piece of plastic do not remove it that's supposed to be on there okay and you've also got a quick disconnect that screws in on the other side of it there that you can hook up to your air hose all right so let's get uh, going here we've got the Teflon tape Put a little bit of Teflon tape on the threads on the pressure gauge. Give it about one and a half wraps. We're going to screw that into the filter dryer regulator there. Get you a wrench. Give it a nice little snug. You don't want to get it super tight. We just don't want to hear any air hissing out. Pull out the red plugs. And I told you, don't remove any of the blue plugs that you've got on the fittings there. Because uh, you, you're going to regret that, all right? Here is the inlet that we're going to hook it up to the air hose from your compressor. And here is the adapter the push connector like i said uh, get your 14 millimeter wrench snug that up good there leave the blue piece right i said leave the blue piece all right just push it in there and if you want to remove it you push in on the blue piece and you can remove the hose if you ever need to replace the hose for whatever reason uh, i shortened this hose uh, over what came in the kit now here's the torch you got a nice heavy duty strain relief on it here you've got the three connections from the torch there you've got the air hose you've got the switch and you've got the red wire that uh, powers the uh, the pilot arc that does the cutting on it that goes to the post that has the red cap on it screw that in there and here is the air hose that powers the cutting head there uh, you don't need to get it super tight it's not going to hold pressure it's just going to feed air to the cutting torch there just get it hand snug and you're good there here is the switch that goes to the torch it's got a key on it push that in you've got the little chrome collar nut Snug that up good there. Uh, next up, you've got the working clamp. That goes on the top connector on the front panel there. Uh, it's got a little key in it, a little tooth. Goes into the groove. Uh, it doesn't snap or lock into place. Just give it a little twist till it gets firm. I'm running it on 220. We're going to plug it into 220 volts. On the back of the unit, you have your power supply, your on and off switch. Turn it on, and first thing we're going to do, we're going to throw up an E05 error code. You know why we're doing that? Because I don't have air connected to it, and I don't have the regulator adjusted. Okay, so let's fix that. I've got the air hose connected to the filter regulator. See that gray knob? Pull up on it. Screw it counterclockwise. That lowers the pressure that's going to be coming out of the cutting head there. Screw it down, and that's going to be raising the pressure that's going to be coming out of the cutting head, okay? Now, the unit has a display that shows you what the pressure is. See how it's rising? I am turning in on the knob there on the back of the unit, and that's raising the air pressure. Press this button here. It then goes into the air mode that lets air out of the cutting head and lets you know exactly what the pressure is coming out. Press it again. Now we're in the cutting mode. All right, and the selector button on the right-hand side is where you adjust the 
PT, which is the post flow, and the PA, which is, which is the pilot arc. Uh, the pilot arc is for how long you get extra juice when you first start cutting. PT is for the post flow. The yellow knob is how you set it. As well, you use the yellow knob to adjust the amp setting on it for according to how thick a metal you want to be cutting there. 2T and 4T. 2T selection, you pull in on the trigger, the gun will start cutting. You release the trigger, it stops cutting. 4T, you pull in on the trigger, it starts cutting and it doesn't stop cutting until you pull the trigger again. Now let's cut some 20 gauge steel here. If you're going to be looking at the bright lights, you need some eye protection. Minimum five shade welding glasses. I'll leave a link down below if you're interested there. 20 gauge steel I'm cutting here. I've got it set on about 20 amps, 30 PSI of air. Check your manual. They've got guidelines for it. I like to just jack things up and as long as I'm not making a mess of things, go ahead and run it that way. If you have a smaller air compressor, uh, you may want to get your air down, air settings down to where you're not uh, running through air too fast, okay? Uh, now let's cut some .060 aluminum with it here. I've got it set at about 30 amps and the air about 30 as well. Uh, this is still rather thin metal and uh, you don't need a lot of air and it, it's cutting through it just like butter I'm telling you there see no problem whatsoever no dross no slag on it on the bottom whatsoever okay next up we're gonna give it a little bit more of a challenge and we're gonna cut some 16 gauge steel rusty steel that's gonna be the challenge there uh, when it is rusty whatever really you want to clean it up there uh, if your guide tip there starts dragging and catching, you're going to get some uh, hiccups in your cut. But uh, this here cut through it effort effortlessly. Uh, here are some quarter inch thick steel. I bumped it up to 40 amps for the quarter inch steel and uh, I cut through it just fine. I jacked the air up a little bit more to about 45 PSI. And this machine is rated to cut up to half inch on the 220 volt uh, setting and at 110 volts it will cut up to 3 8 of an inch thick steel. Uh, you want to jack the air pressure up accordingly. Check the manual for the suggested settings. Play with it and you'll find what works best for you. Now with this quarter inch thick steel here, uh, like I said, it cut through it just fine. A little bit of uh, dross or a slag on the bottom of it easily just tip it off with a hammer there, a little fine adjustment tool action gets it off. And if you want to uh, make it look even prettier, you can take you an angle grinder with the flap disc and dress it up and make it look nice and pretty. Okay, so now let's cut some 3 8 inch thick steel and whoop, hold on we got a problem and I'm embarrassed uh, problem has nothing to do with the plasma torch problem is operator error if you read the manual it's real basic the most basic thing you want to do when you plasma cut is put the doggone working clamp on I didn't have the working clamp on that's why it wasn't cutting I'm surprised it even cut what it did all right, so I got it fixed here. There's a little slag in there for me uh, screwing it up. Uh, like I said, I'm embarrassed, all right? But cut through it just fine once I got the working clamp on it. And uh, you will adjust your technique to the thickness of the metal, the speed. You can't pull it real fast on the thicker metals. You want to take your time. You want to pull it nice and even and slow. And you'll find this thing here cuts like butter. Just take your time, easy and steady speed on the cutting. I cut this 3 8 inch thick piece of steel, no problems whatsoever. Check the link down below. Uh, right now, Hynate is selling this thing here for just a little bit under $240. Can't go wrong with that for a plasma cutter that'll go up to half inch thick steel. That's my opinion on it anyways. If you like the video, give me a thumbs up. Click subscribe. I want to thank each and every one of you for watching. Y'all come back now you're here.